Well, hey guys, how's it going? How about an update on the full screen machine? All right, so hopefully you guys can see. Oh, geez. We had some really bad winds come through here out of the east, which is kind of odd because the only time we ever have any bad winds coming out of the east normally lasts for about eight hours or so and uh, we get a real bad storm but uh, we've been having pretty bad winds coming out of the east for like the past three days which is odd normally our weather comes out and our winds or anything comes out of the west it comes towards us not the other way strangeness but anyways what I have been thinking about doing what I want to do on the rear end here is since I'm gonna have the larger engine back here I don't want to make the engine and the torque converter be a part of the rear swing arm I don't want to have to I don't want to bolt everything onto the swing arm because it's gonna be bouncing in this and the engines a lot of weight and that's a lot of stress on the bolts that hold it together you know just just stuff like that I don't I don't want to have to deal with that so what I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do what I want to do is I want to build off a platform off the back where the engine is going to go right here. The torque converter is going to be towards you guys, and it's going to come forward. I'm going to need a jack shaft set up right here, somewhere. I'm going to need another sprocket going down to another jack shaft, which is where the swing arm, the pivot for the swing arm is going to be. So I'm going to need two jack shaft setups here. The swing arm pivot is probably trying to set up a jack shaft in line with the pivots is going to be extremely hard to do. So I'm thinking what I might do is put bearings back here at the pivot, create the, create a jack shaft that goes straight all the way through, and have the whole jack shaft, jack shaft rotating, which will hold also the rear end on. So I'm going to need two Four, six more bearings back here. Then I'm going to need seven, eight, eight for the jack shaft up here. Two more going down to a sprocket here, where the jack shaft's going to, where the pivot jack shaft is going to be at, and then that's going to lead down to the sprocket. The shocks. Not too sure yet. The shocks are going to have to be mounted onto here, going up, connecting to the frame that I'm going to be building off to here, building off here. This frame, where the engine is going to be sitting, will go up, arc over, and then be part of the roll cage. So it's going to come out, go up, angle up, front roll cage open area over here jack shaft going down to the pivot jack shaft and then going down here because I don't want I don't want to take the engine and, and the torque converter and everything and put it back and mount it onto all this bounce that's going to be going on back here I don't want to do that so that's roughly about what my plans are for now the frame will come out, angle up, and then go in, and then connect to the pivot. Might put... I don't know, I probably could just get away with uh, using just regular pillow block bearings. That would be the cheapest way to go. Because I've noticed on a lot of those Manco carts, Manco, a lot of homemade, or not homemade, um, like factory go-karts, the uh, engine, where the engine is placed in relation to the occupant, the engine center of gravity is right roughly where the center of your back, between the lower of your back and the center of your back. That's where the engine is placed in, in, you know, in line with everything. So if I were to take the engine and mount the engine somewhere right here, or maybe slightly a little lower, then I've got where my seat's going to go, my body, or anybody else's body. That'll give me a good, decent center there. i got to play around with it in the CAD first and see what... Uh, See how I'm going to be able to do this and see how easy it's going to be to do. It's going to be a little difficult with all these angular cuts and stuff like that building off this whole chassis that's going to go. 
I probably could just make the chassis, the engine the chassis shorter, line up with this bar and this bar, make everything line up just with these, with this bar here and this bar, these two bars, and then come down here, build off extensions on the actual rear swing arm, so that way they come in closer contact with these, with these tires, closer to the tires, so I don't have to worry about bending my axle if I ever hit anything really hard. Because if I built, if I shortened up my rear swing arm, then I'm going to have a problem with possibly bending my axle on collision on anything. So the wider I have my frame, the least chance that will happen. So, that's my intention. Maybe. Got some mail here. Some people sent me some stickers. I got... X, 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 mower dude, X, 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 X. Yeah, so many X's. Triple X is that? Yeah, okay. Send me this sticker right here. It says I'm subscribed to mower dude on YouTube. Now I haven't taken the sticker off and looked at it, so let me see here quick and see what this looks like. Oh, okay, well. I'm going to have to find something to stick this on. I don't want to mess it up by peeling this thing away. That's cool. And I got this letter a long, long time ago, and it ended up getting lost in my mess on my computer. But it's from Red ZZ 2 And he sent a sticker. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. But it's a black silhouette of a mower. Yeah, it's a little hard to see. And <laughs> a big old keychain thing. Look at that. That's a neat idea. And he's got another one, another sticker here that says uh, SB Bell Motors www.youtube.com red zz02 and it's a let me see I'll show you guys here you guys can see through that yeah let me see about the other one can you see through that one uh, yeah, that one's a little bit more thick paper there he sent a letter to it says uh, Dear Team Man's Go-Karts, thanks a lot for the videos you put out. You do an awesome job at explaining and the different shots you get. Also hope everything, oh yeah, with the landlord goes well in your favor. Also, the subs and views I got from the Mower Mod Challenge video response and the great recognition you gave me in your following video. Good luck with everything. Keep it up. Hope you like the stickers. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of you guys don't quite un don't some of you new subscribers don't know that I give my subscribers a lot of opportunities to grow their channel by offering this kind of stuff, by offering the back uh oh, I better get that picture fixed. By offering uh, you a chance to send in your picture to me. Uh, on a side note, when it comes to YouTube, I also set my videos up so that way you can do video responses right away. I don't have to approve them. I set those up so that way those of you who want to put video responses to my videos on your builds or anything, you can do that automatically. And obviously you know that you grow by posting, commenting, thumbs upping and stuff. Yeah, I give I give my uh, subscribers and the people who watch me and stuff a lot of opportunities to grow without even getting shout outs or anything. So I'm glad to offer that to people. I told myself a long time ago that if I was ever gonna make it in doing anything, I was gonna help other people do it too. But for shout outs and stuff, other than like this, sending me mail or sending me pictures, if you primarily want to shout out or something like that, you know, your video, your channel has to have at least 20 videos, um, consistent content, stuff that's related to mine, you know, that sort of stuff. But I give my, 
I give people a lot of opportunities to help grow their channel on their own. So that's where I'm at with this right now. Got the Batmobile parked outside on the side of the shop. The mower is also over on the side of the shop also. And that poor thing is just stripped down. And I know some of you guys have been asking me about the mower, but yeah, that's where she's sitting right now. But anyways, guys, I'm going to get back to it, start messing around in the CAD and see how achievable this is, how much it's going to cost to do it this way. And I'd like to welcome all my new subscribers and all my new viewers. Welcome. I still have stickers available over on my website. And I'd also like to thank those of you who have donated. That helps out. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya. Before I end this video, I wanted to point something out that was a little strange that I've noticed on YouTube here in the past few days. I don't know why I didn't notice this before. We can go around on YouTube here and we can find channels that have 3,000 subscribers, 5,000, 10, 15, 25, 35, 45,000 subscribers. We can find channels out there with 120,000 subscribers, 300, 400, 800,000. But what I've noticed is that there seems to be a gap between 50,000 subscribers and 100,000 subscribers. How many channels do you come across that might have 79,000 subscribers? 65,000. Where are those guys at? Where are all those channels at? Well, they, they, they have to exist or else, you know, there's no way you can get from 50 up to 100,000. But it's like, where are all those people at? You can find all the small people. You can find the real big people. But the medium people, where are they?